It's Wednesday, April 10th, and this is TikTok. A big hello to all of our listeners. I'm Andrew Mock, and this is your TikTok podcast with the global news you need to know. Today, we're talking about a major breakthrough in the scientific community, the first ever photo of a supermassive black hole. The National Science Foundation unveiled the image to the public today. We are delighted to be able to report to you today that we have seen what we thought was unseeable. We have seen and taken a picture of a black hole. The photo is reportedly the first direct visual evidence that black holes exist, which was made possible after more than a decade of research by hundreds of scientists working with the Event Horizon Telescope. So how do you see something that is by definition impossible to see? Joining me to unpack this story is Katie Bauman. She was part of the international team of astronomers who created the world's largest telescope to take the very first picture of a black hole. Katie, thanks for speaking with me today. Thank you. So, Katie, the concept of black holes has been around since Albert Einstein published his theory of relativity, but we're only now just able to see them. So for our listeners, catch us up to what today's news is all about. How big of a breakthrough is this? I I think this is a a huge breakthrough for science and for the studies on gravity and black holes. So, you know, uh, over 100 years ago, Einstein first predicted the existence of black holes. But uh, until today, we have never actually been able to see what a black hole looks like. And so this is uh, what I believe is the strongest evidence we have to date that black holes exist. For, for years, we've observed them in different ways through lots of different experiments. We have built up proof of their existence, but we've never actually seen them until now. But, you know, we could have pointed our telescopes towards the black hole and seen just a blob. You know, it, it didn't, we didn't have to see this ring of light. And the fact that we did, and it's the size that is consistent with past measurements that have been taken uh, that predict the mass of the black hole is amazing evidence and support uh, of this theory. And so up to now, we still have no evidence to disprove uh, general relativity. And, and so the news is, is about this, this new image. For our listeners, describe what was captured in the image and what we're actually seeing. You know, you might ask, how can we see a black hole if it's black? Well, it turns out that black hole is, is surrounded by you know, gas that is, is, the, the black hole is trying to, trying to swallow. And it's, it's, um, and it's heated up to hundreds of billions of degrees so that it emits bright light. What we would expect is that this bright light would be gravitationally lensed around the black hole to, to see a, so, such that it would form a ring of light. And this is what is referred to as the black hole shadow. And so this picture shows for the first time, you know, we, we've predicted this ever since I think the 70s, people have predicted that this ring would, would appear. Uh, this picture for the first time shows that we actually, when we pointed our telescopes, we saw this ring, which is amazingly consistent. We, we, we haven't proven general relativity through this experiment, but we haven't disproven it either, and I think that is amazing. We've never seen a real image of a black hole before, but we have seen artist renderings of it. I'm thinking of the movie Interstellar. How accurate are these artistic representations of the real thing now? Actually, Interstellar is amazingly similar to what scientists have been saying that we would see from a black hole for a long time, and it is quite amazing that when we got this picture, it looks very similar to what we see if we blur simulations that people already had created of, of black holes. And so let's talk about your specific role in this discovery. Yeah. Obviously, the, you know, this overall project has been in the works for a long time, but when did you come into it? So I started with the project in 2013, the end of 2013. I didn't know anything about black holes. They were saying, you know, words like micro arc seconds and Janskys and crazy things that I didn't understand. And so from then, I I started working, trying to understand the problem um, in order to come up with new algorithms that would allow us to take this unique, messy, sparse data and make pictures from it. And and the reason why it's such an interesting problem is that we we need an Earth-sized telescope in order to measure something that's as small as the black as this black hole this black hole is as small as if you were trying to take a picture of an orange on the moon and so in order to take something like that diffraction just tells us that we would need to build the telescopes the size of the earth but because we can't do that what the event horizon telescope has done is linked up telescopes around the world and makes a virtual earth-sized telescope that then allows us to make a picture and so the goal then of of imaging is to come up with algorithms that not only try to find an image that fits the data, 
but finds the most likely image to have fit the data. And, and help us understand the scope of the Event Horizon Telescope, which you mentioned. You know, it wasn't just one telescope that was that was getting this image. It was a bunch of different telescopes all around the world. In order to see something that's that small at that wavelength, we needed a, a telescope that you know spans the globe. Instead of building an Earth-sized telescope, which is obviously impossible, we we took telescopes that were already um, built for other purposes, and we merged them together into one computational telescope. In the Event Horizon Telescope in 2017, we observed with eight telescopes at six geographical locations, and so that's an incredibly sparse amount of data to try to make an image from, but th that is where the computer algorithms then come into play. So we take the sparse, really noisy data and then try to make that image. And how would you compare those results to other scientific achievements, these milestones of the past? Where does it rank for you? It's number one in my mind. I've been so excited about this for, for so long, and it's been, uh, I'm so excited to be able to share it with everyone. I think it's another piece of the story. We need all these different scientific achievements to, to try to, to piece together the full picture. I imagine this is just the beginning of, of new breakthroughs. What's next in terms of this specific research? You know, when we all pointed our telescopes at the black hole, we didn't know really, you know, we had a guess as to what we would see. You know, it's, it's not great to bet against Einstein, but we, we didn't know what we were going to see. And the fact that we got this ring was quite amazing. I mean, now we know we have this laboratory that we can continue to go back and, and point our telescopes again, add more telescopes, continue to get sharper and sharper images so we can start to test um, general relativity and, and learn about the space and um, and the dynamics around a black hole even more and more. So I think that, you know, this is one step, but it's quite an amazing step because it means that we have this ability and that we have this laboratory to test our ideas on. All right, that's all very good to know. Again, I've been speaking with Katie Bauman. She was a key figure in the first ever captured image of a black hole. Katie, thanks for speaking with me today. Thank you very much. Turning now to other news of the day, here's what's happening. New Zealand's parliament voted 119 to 1 to pass sweeping gun laws that outlaw military-style weapons. The move comes less than a month after mass shootings at two mosques in the city of Christchurch left 50 people dead and dozens wounded. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern delivered a passionate speech to lawmakers. Most importantly, we are here because of the victims and families. And I believe that they are here with us supporting what we are doing here today as well. We in this House are their voice, and today, Mr Speaker, we have used that voice wisely. Senator Bernie Sanders introduced a new Medicare for All proposal today in a bid to keep health care policy at the center of the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. Other 2020 contenders, including Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, Kirsten Gillibrand, and Elizabeth Warren, also backed the legislation. Sanders said he wants to end the, quote, international embarrassment of the U.S. being the only major country that doesn't guarantee health coverage to its citizens. The American people are increasingly clear. They want a health care system that guarantees health care to all Americans as a right. They want a health care system which will substantially lower the cost of prescription drugs. And finally, Prince Harry and Oprah announced that they will co-create a mental health documentary series that will launch on Apple TV in 2020. The series will focus on both mental illness and mental wellness, a statement said, and aims to inspire viewers to have honest conversations about challenges people face. Prince Harry has been a champion of mental health in the past and has spoken candidly about seeking help. Part of being strong and tough is having the courage to ask for help when you need it. You must not silently suffer. You are all in this together. And if I may speak personally, we are all in this together. Because asking for help was one of the best decisions that I ever made. You will be continually amazed how life changes for the better. That's your TikTok update for Wednesday. You can find out more about all of these stories everywhere we are. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and check us out on Instagram. Thanks for listening. I'm Andrew Mock, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow.